Our job begins where most advisors stop. Saving money is great, but how do you spend it without risk in retirement? Welcome to Every Day is Saturday with Brad Gatto and Matt Stahl, partners and private wealth managers at Fiat Wealth Management. In this podcast, we aim to broaden your knowledge about the financial world we live in today and make the boring and complex financial decisions fun, informative, and educational. Join us on this journey where Brad and Matt will explore different strategies on how to spend your money without guilt and have peace of mind knowing you are spending it the optimal way in retirement. You've heard from the founders of our firm, Brad and Matt, and we've heard from one of our advisors. Today, we're going to move along to another one of our advisors, Daniel Pekka. Welcome to Every Day is Saturday. I'm Matt Stahl. And I'm Brad Gatto. And we're excited to introduce you to Daniel Pekka. Daniel, why don't you say hi to everybody? Hey, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for having me on, Matt and Brad. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's start with your fiat story before we get into your personal story. <clears throat> Daniel, why don't you tell everybody when you joined fiat and, and how in the world you got here? Yeah, great question. I think my official start date with Fiat was October 5th. So I think it's a little over eight months now. And I got connected with Fiat through Brad, through a mutual friend back in August. And I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit more later, but just like the way things were done here and hit it off with Brad and felt like it was the right move for me. Kind of just the right things happening at the right time to get connected with Brad and, and felt like it was the right move for me. So Daniel, give us a little bit more color. Where did you, where were you working prior to Fiat? And then what kind of precipitated your, because when, when we met, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we met, you were already looking for a change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, before I came to Fiat, I was a financial advisor at Thrivent financial. I think now they're just thriving, but was a financial advisor there. And yes, you're correct, Brad. I had already started to look elsewhere. And a big reason for that was realizing that there's an independent space out there in the financial advising world. You know, I was at Thrivent, so was part of a captive agency and nothing wrong with that by any means, but in the way that I wanted to help people and conduct business, wanted to to look into the independent space and was actually looking between a firm in St. Louis that I knew a, a group down there that was doing some financial advising. And then through just the right circumstances, I had a mutual friend that knows both Brad and I, and she's like, I think you just need to meet Brad. I don't know what's going to come of it. I just feel like you need to meet. So took a day off in, in August and drove over here to YZ and had lunch with Brad out on the patio. And through hearing more about the firm and how they operate, I think I went home and a couple of days later, I think I basically called Brad back and I was like, if I'm looking to make a change, is there space for me? Brad, I don't know if you remember that exactly, but I think that's kind of how that conversation went. I do remember the conversation because I went back out to the patio to talk to you. It was really hot outside for an October yes. or September day or whenever it was. I remember answering a lot of questions, but I didn't. The funny thing is when we met, Sarah said the same thing to me. And so I thought it was just you trying to do some homework. I didn't anticipate things going the way that they did. And you didn't live in the Twin Cities, let alone in the state of Minnesota. Where were you living at the time? Yeah, good point. I actually lived in, my wife and I lived in Wausau, Wisconsin at the time. So I was about three and a half hours straight east of here in, in Wisconsin. So made the, the day trip over to, to meet Brad. And even though it was going to require a move, that was, it felt like it was the right decision. And that's where we were before we came to Fiat. Daniel, can we rewind and go way, way back? I want to hear about the young Daniel Pekka. So tell us your origin story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So I grew up in Wisconsin. I grew up in North central Wisconsin. My and dad we don't is hold the... that against him just so that all the listeners yeah. know we've gotten past that and you should too. <laughs> thanks, Brad. Um, yeah. So my dad is the, he's an executive director of a, a Christian camp in North central Wisconsin. So that's where I spent my childhood growing up, I grew up in a town of about 900 people. 
So a very small town in Wisconsin, but my, my biggest memories of my childhood are being at camp. That's that I feel like that's a huge part of who I am. And when other kids went to summer camp and went home, I just went back the next week and I just stayed all summer long and all fall and all winter and never got to leave camp, which was in my mind, a huge blessing and was able to create a ton of lifelong friends through that. And it was a pretty, pretty awesome experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I feel like that being at camp for all those years really made me into who I am today. And just from all the people I got to be around the, the older second parents, basically that I got to, to learn from and learning what hard work is. So that's where I grew up and kind of the atmosphere I got to grow up in. I was always an extremely active kid. My mom can attest to that, I'm sure. I'm huge into sports and I think that's been a part of me my entire life. I always had a, a football or baseball or basketball and was always running around and, and keeping my mom busy. My sister was the be quiet, controlled one. I was the loud, crazy, um, going all over the place one, which probably doesn't sound like me if you know me now, because I think I've changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's what I was about to say. Matt and I were kind of looking at each other here like, what in the world is he talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've changed. We'll, we'll just test that to maturity, I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and just, just for the record, if you were to meet Daniel in person, one of the first things that would pop in your head would likely be this guy played basketball at some point. <laughs> <laughs> And this it, fun story for the listeners. So the fact that he's joking around about being the rambunctious one, now he's the quiet one. And in our office, he's definitely the most quiet one in the office uh, as far as the advisors <laughs> are concerned. We were all giving him a little bit of guff the other day because he broke his toe. And we were all very curious what he said when he broke his toe, like how <laughs> how the scene played out, what words came out of his mouth, if any choice words had come out of his mouth. And we were all not surprised to find out that he just groaned a little bit. <laughs> no, no words were spoken. Yeah. So you obviously got it all out when you were young and grew up at camp. So how did, where did you end up going to school and what'd you go to school for? Yeah. So I went to UW lacrosse actually for my first year, my freshman year. And I did, uh, actually did track and field there for one year. So I got to be part of that track team, which if you're not familiar, they have, one of the best division three track and field programs in the country. It was fun to be a part of that culture and just find out what it means to be on a college team like that. What but events were you a part of? Like, what did you yeah, do with the track? I, uh, so I went there to do long jump and triple jump. That was where two of my better events in high school. And actually I never got to do it in a meet, but they had me start to learn to throw javelin, which was pretty cool but got a bad case of like tennis elbow and I wasn't able to actually compete in a meet, but I got to learn to throw javelin, which was pretty fun. So just throwing a giant spear was fun to practice. <laughs> but yeah, so after my freshman year at lacrosse, I actually transferred to the university of Northwestern St. Paul, which at that time was Northwestern college and wanted to play basketball. I knew the, the basketball coach there and he had tried to get me to come play there in high school. And I just felt like I really missed basketball after being away from it for a year. So I played basketball, played basketball there two years. And then I actually played a year of football my last semester. I missed football so much by the time I got done with college that I was like, can I just take one class and then play football the fall semester and graduate in December? So I went an extra semester longer than I probably needed to just so that I could play a year of football and, and get that experience. So I uh, was the wide receiver or a wide receiver. And I was also our punter for the team that season, which was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Probably the only six foot six punter I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, was, that uh, fun fact. Yeah. I was never planning to be the punter, but beginning of the season, they're like, all right, who wants to try out? And I punted in high school. So I knew I could do it. And then I was, I guess I just impressed the coaches just enough. <laughs> <laughs> So what were you studying um, at the time? Yeah. So I was, I just went for my general business degree. When I was at lacrosse, I was kind of looking at sports management. And then when I first transferred to Northwestern, I was looking at like some sort of 
Christian ministry degree, wasn't really sure what that would look like. But then as I went farther into it, I was like, maybe just a general business degree would be good. So I just got my general business degree, took all the accounting finance classes, probably didn't apply myself as much as I should have. Part of that was probably being in college sports and just wanted to do what I had to do to get through with some passing grades. <laughs> but yeah, then I graduated in December of 2015 from the University of Northwestern. So go ahead, man. So you, you had another career path before you became an advisor, correct? Yeah, I, yes, I did. I, when I graduated Northwestern, I, I had that camp DNA ingrained in me working at a camp and it's not just a summer camp. It's a year round camp. But after I graduated college, I was realizing how much I miss camp and just being in that setting and, and around those people. So when I graduated in December, 2015, I actually started at the camp where my dad is and was our retreat coordinator for two and a half years and worked with retreat groups. So any, anything from youth groups that need a weekend away to, uh, an adult retreat group, it might be a men's ministry group from a church, or we had college groups come through. So if you're familiar with like InterVarsity or Campus Crusade, they would come up and do weekend retreats. And I was in charge of setting all those things up, getting all the details in order, making sure that they were paying the amount that they were supposed to pay and, and just having that side of camp. So I enjoyed it a ton, met some really great people along the way from some of those retreat groups that I'm still in touch with today. But that was where I went right after college. And so how did you get from that being the retreat coordinator at camp with your family to thrive and into the, the financial advisory industry? Yeah. So I think a big part of that is my wife, because she came to work at the camp in 2017. We met September 1st of 2017 and we were married September 8th of 2018. So we met, dated, got engaged, and married all within a year. Why uh, did you stretch that out so long? Is I was trying to be patient, <laughs> but just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do it anymore. So we joke, my parents have a similar story. They met, dated, and got engaged all within like 15 months or something like that. So the joke is that we were just trying to beat them. So that's why we did it within <laughs> a year. <laughs> but yeah, so we got married in September of 2018. But then we decided to move to Wausau right after that. So in, in Wausau, Wisconsin, and I had gotten a job at a brand new Hilton Garden Inn in Wausau that was like a front desk manager slash assistant GM type role because we had made that decision pretty quickly to move. And that was one of the better jobs that I could find. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm taking this is going to be good experience. Uh, it's in the hospitality realm. So I have, I kind of have an idea of, you know, what that takes. So yeah, so we moved and I started there after about, let's see, that was September after about five or six months was just starting to feel like, I'm not sure if this is the right direction for me. We were newly married. We both had, Hannah was working at target. Hannah's my wife, by the way. And she was working at Target. So we were working a lot of weekends and evenings and just kind of doing what you had to do to make a living when you first get married. It was, I guess, looking back on it now, it was good experience, but at the time it was hard. But through that time of being at the Hilton Garden Inn, had some relationships that were currently at Thrivent and they had reached out to a, their, their regional development director. And it was like, I think you should check out Daniel. I think he can have what it takes to be a financial advisor and it's worth having a conversation with him. And so those conversations started happening in February, actually of 2019 and kind of going into it. My mindset was, yeah, I want to do this, but I think it was because I was ready to get out of the hotel. <laughs> I'd been, it was one of those jobs where you're always on call. So I had always had my ringer on in the middle of the night. I remember couple of times getting called at 2.30 in the morning to have to go and cover the night shift because something happened with the night shift's kid and they had to go to the emergency room or whatever. So I feel like I still have a little bit of PTSD when I hear a certain ringtone because that was my <laughs> ringtone when I was working at the hotel. And I remember hearing that multiple times at, in the middle of nights. So 
I have to get over that somehow, I think. <laughs> so with your but yeah jumping in then to the advisory yeah. space, just over the last couple of years, Daniel, and, and with your time here at Fiat, what what has surprised you the most uh, about kind of the most unexpected part of this job that you didn't see coming? Yeah. And then what's your favorite part about it? Yeah, I'll start with the favorite part because I think that one's an easier question to answer. <laughs> I think my favorite part is, first off, you get to meet a lot of people. That comes from my history of being at camp and meeting tons of new people all the time. And there's just, I mean, there's just a lot of great people out in the world. I mean, there's wonderful people out there that's fun to meet. And I think with that, knowing the value that we get to bring to the table and helping people, when you get done with a process with someone, and I know in previous podcasts, you guys have gone over what that process looks like, but getting to the end of a process with someone and hearing them say, you know, we, we couldn't have done this without you, or we have learned so much, or this has been so worth it. I think those are awesome words to hear kind of when you're getting to the end of a planning process with a client or with a prospect. Uh, it's just really satisfying that you've been able to help them out and end up getting them in a better spot than when you had first started talking to them. So I think that's one of my favorite parts of this role. And Brad, what was the first question? Surprising. Uh, what's, what's surprising? The most surprising. Yeah, I, that, that's a hard question too, because I had really low expectations coming into this role. <laughs> Part of that is because you, met, I know, you mean the advisory space, not a fiat specific, not fiat, right? Right, <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, what I mean by that is I knew that being a financial advisor was hard. And I knew that making it through like the first three years is the toughest part about being a financial advisor. So for me, I think that was the thing that I had to trust is, okay, who, who am I? Trust in how I am able, am able to interact with people and just and trust that the value that I'm bringing is worth it to them. But I think that was, I think that's something I'm just continuing to learn is just trusting who I am and, and just asking the right questions. I, I, I think to really answer that question, Brad, it's almost not as about how much, but really being able to build trust with people and, and asking the right questions. I think that's something that I've learned from both you and Matt. You can, you're never going to have all the answers in this role, but if you can build trust with someone and ask the right questions, I think that's what's going to get you really far because I had no financial background coming into this role. And that's what made me a little nervous about being a financial advisor. But those two, two things being in this role, I think have helped out tremendously. Well, Matt was an engineer and I was a financial advisor. So the fact that you have a business degree puts you <laughs> way in front of where you, we started. You were a pastor. <laughs> what did I say? He said a financial You advisor. said financial oh, advisor. See, I have PTSD too. I have PTSD too. <laughs> he meant to say youth pastor. Hey, you know what? Matt yes. thinks I have three kids. So <laughs> Daniel, I want to hear. So what are your, we know that you enjoyed sports growing up. What are your, what do you like yeah. to do when you're outside of the office now? What are your hobbies? What are your passions? Yeah. Um, pretty much anything that'll get me active and moving. I love to golf. My, my wife and I love to golf and that's a fun thing for us to do. Love to play, pick up basketball with my brother, just one-on-one. -on -one. My wife and I have just started to play tennis. So pretty much anything that that involves like sports is, is what I like to do. I love to water ski, uh, downhill ski, cross country ski, basically anything in the sports realm is what I like to do. Volleyball. I don't think there's a ton of limits to that. <laughs> so the question is who wins between you and your brother? That's a good question because he's probably not probably he is quicker than me now, but I have the muscle so I can just kind of back him down into the post, but he can, he's a much better shooter than I am. So I would say he would probably beat me and this is going to make him, him feel good. He'd probably beat me 70% of the time. I would say right now, <laughs> I still have that 30 I, though. I still got that 30. So I can beat him every once in a while, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's playing college basketball down at Emmaus Bible college right now. So he's kind of staying up to speed with all of that. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's, let's end with just kind of some fun facts about Daniel Matt and I'll just kind of pepper a handful of questions at you here just so that uh, the listeners can get to know you even a little bit more. So I'll ask the first question. What is one thing that most people don't know about you? 
that you're willing to share on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I literally asked my wife that question this morning. I was like, okay, I'm going to be a podcast. I feel like this question is coming because <laughs> I always struggle with that question. But I would say when I was in between my junior and senior year of high school, I had a really bad leg infection. I had cellulitis in my left leg and it was so bad that I was probably a day or two away from them having to amputate it. So I, I was in the hospital for a week wow. and they had to remove the infection. And I, my leg was basically like froze up. I had to almost learn to walk again. Cause I couldn't move my foot at all. So I, I don't think a lot of people know that about me, but it was, that was a hard time in my life. Cause I was in high school and playing sports and I didn't, I went to the hospital and they're like, we need to admit you right away. Cause you might, we might, you're that close to losing your leg. So wow. I would say that's my final answer on that question. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. All right. So if we decide to send you and Hannah on a vacation next Monday and we're picking out the tab, where are you guys going? That's a hypothetical, I would by say, the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, shoot. All right. I would say we'd have to narrow it down to between two places. One would be resort in Mexico because we love the beach. We love the warm weather. But we also really love, or I love up near Calgary in Canada, Banff, Lake Louise area. My dad's from Canada. He has family up there. So I've been able to visit there. And my wife really wants to get up there in the summertime, not the winter time, but <laughs> so I'd probably say maybe Banff or Lake Louise up in Canada in the Rockies. Favorite athlete growing up. It has to be Brett Favre. I uh, great Minnesota, from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, that's it. Okay. Good, great good choice there. I should be very specific when I answer that way. <laughs> yeah. Grew up watching Brett Favre and the Packers and love the, love the gunslinger from the South. Now I'd have to say Brett Favre. We already know the answer to this question, but what is your spirit animal? <laughs> <laughs> spirit animal. I want to know what your answer is, Matt. Oh, Brad knows. It's obviously a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's, I guess I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm just going to let you guys have that one. <laughs> Where is, where's your favorite place to go eat? What's your favorite kind of food? Ooh, I'm a big burger guy. And so when we were in Wasa, we really like to go to Milwaukee burger company because they put like two inch cheese curds on the burger and felt awful afterwards, but it was awesome when you're reading it. So I'd probably say that. What's one thing you want to happen before the end of this year? I would love to take my wife on a vacation for our anniversary because who knows when we might start having kids and I would love to just get one last trip in just the two of us before, before we start adding to the family. You can't just slide that fun fact in there and act like <laughs> we didn't pick up on that. Is there something that we should know about or <laughs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> I mean, this would probably be a horrible way for my parents and my in-laws to find out. So I'm not, I promise I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, how, how many people get to announce the the pregnancy of their first child on a podcast. <laughs> That's true. No, but, not, not pregnant yet, but looking to hopefully start a family in the near future. We're very excited about that. All right. As we wrap up here, Daniel, is there anything that we didn't ask you that we should have or anything that you want to make sure that as people listen to this and they're getting to know Daniel Petka, that, that they should know that we didn't already cover? Oh, man. I don't think so. I think you guys did a great job of covering all those questions. I'll probably think I knew you were going to say that. And I just wanted the compliments. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably think of it in 10 minutes and be like, Oh, I should have added that in there, but uh, uh, I don't think so. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, it's been a joy having you on the team uh, since last October. It's been fun watching you grow as a part of Fiat. And we know that long-term are going to be a very important part of this firm. And so we're excited to have you as a part of the team. And so as we close up, as always, thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. If you want to reach out to us here at Fiat, our website is going to provide you all of the information that you need. And you can find us at www.fiat, F-I-A-T-W-M, stands for wealth management, fiatwm.com. Please check out the website. We're always adding content to the website. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the podcast so you do not miss an episode 
And we would love it if you would share it with your friends and your loved ones. As always, I'm Brad Gatto with my partner, Matt Stahl. And we will see you next Saturday. But Brad, we don't record the podcast on Saturday. Matt, every day is Saturday. Aha. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Fiat Wealth Management or Foundations Investment Advisors. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. 